of chapter two, this is nomenclature, which is a really big name for naming. Okay. Now, we're going to follow the rules through. You don't get the rules for the test, but as you work the problems, you'll understand them. We're going to do, um, this is an inorganic class, so this is inorganic nomenclature. All right. So what we're going to do is in binary compounds, which is usually a metal and a non-metal, um, uh, there are several types of binary compounds. First one we're going to do is metal and non-metal. Cation is named first and the anion is named second. So if we have this, monoatomic cation takes its name from the element. So that's Na is sodium. And the monoatomic anion is named by taking the element name and replacing it with IDE. So Cl is chlorine, so then it, we're going to change it once it becomes an ion. The I and E goes to IDE, so it's chloride. So when we name this, we put it up here, so it's sodium chloride. Okay, so when you name any of them, like calcium hydride, this would be calcium. Hydrogen becomes hydride. Now, remember IDE is the ending for the elemental, elemental monoatomic ion. Okay, when you get to the polyatomics, that's the list you have to memorize. And the ending becomes very important. More about that in just a minute. Now, metals having more than one oxidation state are named as simple binaries, except, and you do either A or B, but not both, the oxidation number given by the Roman numerals in parentheses, or you use the older nomenclature. So, for example... FeCl3, if you use the Roman numerals, so for the A form of this one, it'd be iron 3, and you know it's iron 3 because chloride is 1 minus, and there are three of them, so iron has to be 3 plus. So basically, all you're doing is the oxidation numbers there, and then it's chloride. Now, if you use the old nomenclature, remember that's the ick and the us. Um, iron is 2 plus and 3 plus, so the 3 plus is the higher. So this would be ferric chloride. Now, notice you either use the Roman numeral or you use the old nomenclature. You don't use both. Now, some of them you're not responsible for, like... If I were to give you that, okay, you don't have the old nomenclature for nickel. So all you'd have to do is you figure out that oxygen is 2 minus, so nickel has to be 2 plus. So since it's 2 plus, it's nickel 2 oxide, okay? Now, remember we had lead in 10, so PBCL. 2 is lead 2 chloride or plumbus chloride. Because remember the old names you're responsible for are iron, copper, tin, and lead, okay? And again, once we get through the rules, we'll work more problems. Now, binaries that contain polyatomic ions, you name like the regular binaries, except the IDDE ending is not added to the polyatomic ions. So, for example, if you have this, this is lithium phosphate. 
Now, notice when you write this, you don't write three lithiums because if that's understood because you know that, because you memorized it, that the phosphate is three minus and lithium is one plus, so therefore you have to have three lithiums to balance it out. Okay? So you, you don't write that in there. So, um, um, let me look at my periodic table. So, um, strontium, SRSO3 would be strontium sulfite. Okay? And this, remember, would be different than this because this is strontium strontium Spelling's optional on strontium. Uh, sulfide. So notice the IDE ending is when you're taking it straight from the element. The ITE or ATE is when you're involving oxygens. Okay, again, ATE for the higher oxidation, ITE for the lower. So again, strontium sol SO4 would be strontium sulfate so when I said spelling counts if you write an ATE versus an ITE for this one that would be wrong and vice versa okay if you add a hydrogen to a polyatomics and all the polyatomics don't do this but a common one to do this is carbonate and phosphate will we'll deal with those two ions. If you add a hydrogen to it, you add either hydrogen or bi. So, for example, if you have sodium H carbonate, okay? Sodium is one plus, hydrogen is one plus, carbonate is two minus. So this would be sodium, hydrogen, carbonate, or and again, you don't have to give me both. Sodium bicarbonate. Now, if you add two hydrogens, it's just a hydrogen. So in the case of uh, phosphate, if you had sodium um, two hydrogen phosphate, and you need two sodiums here because phosphate is three plus, this is sodium biphosphate or sodium hydrogen phosphate again doesn't matter which one you use but don't do both all right now if we take it up a notch and take two hydrogens with the phosphate then we only have one option which is sodium sodium dihydrogen phosphate and while you would write that on one line when you run out of room you can space it out because notice that you're separating each part with a line um, except for the bi actually attaches so that's what we do when we add hydrogen to the species now the next group is nonmetals and nonmetals okay now a lot of people like this one because this one uses a little bit more prefix wise okay so the first element is named using the full element name the second element is used is named as if it were an anion except prefixes are used for the number of atoms present mono is never used for naming the first element but it is the second so, for example, if we have CO, that is carbon monoxide. This falls into the, the rule of if you have an O on an A or another O, instead of saying carbon monoxide, you say carbon monoxide truncates it like they do in romance languages okay 
and that tells you exactly. So that's carbon monoxide, whereas this species is carbon dioxide. And if you have this species, this is dinitrogen tetroxide. Again, tetraoxide. Now, what are your prefixes? Mono, di, tri, those are all easy. Tetra, tetra, tetrahedral. Remember from geography, that's tetrahedral. This is one, two, three, four. Penta is five. Hexa is six. Hepta is seven, not septa. Yes, September is the, what, okay, used to be the seventh month before they added January and February. Then it became the ninth month. Um, that's why you have September, October, November, because they're all, you know, eight, nine. December is 10. Look up calendars. Um, so you've got to know the prefixes. As I said, most of them are, are simple. Um, other than the tetra usually throws people off. But that's how you name nonmetals and nonmetals. So, so far, think about it. With metals, you either get Roman numerals or old nomenclature. With nonmetals, you get prefixes. You do not get prefixes with metals. Okay? The next group are acids. They're binary acids that contain hydrogen in a nonmetal. So, for example, if you have HCl, that's hydrogen. chloride but if you name it as an acid then the hydrogen becomes hydro so this becomes hydro the ied ide ending becomes ic so hydrochloric and you add acid okay so this would be hydrofluoric acid okay and how do you know to name it as a pure compound or an acid I will tell you name as an acid okay so that's with binaries where you just have a hydrogen and a nonmetal what happens when you have the oxy acids Okay, so if we have HNO3, remember this is nitrate. Okay, so when you deal with hydro, um, with oxy acids, the, uh, if, the, if it's an 8 ending, it goes to ick. If it's it, it goes to us. If you have one less, you use hypo, like we did with hypochlorous it becomes hypo, uh, hypochlorite becomes hypochlorous. Perchlorate becomes per ick. Okay. And for oxy acids, hydro is not used. So in this case, this is hydrogen nitrate. This would become nitric acid. Okay. So HNO2 is nitrous acid. So if we had HClO, that's hydrogen um, hypochlorous, then that's hypochlorous acid. Because this is hydrogen Chlorite. No, I left something off there. I'm trying to write in here. Hydrogen um, hypochlorite. The hydrogen goes away. The hypo, the ite goes to us. If it's per, so HClO4, which is hydrogen. Per 
perchlorate. The eight goes to ick. So this acid, and we drop the hydrogen. So this is perchloric acid. So the bottom line is, is if you really know your polyatomics and you can name it as if it's not an acid, then it's just easy to convert it to if it is an acid. Okay. Then there are four species that you need the common name of. Um, this one is water. The official name is dihydrogen oxide. And every now and then you'll see somebody plays a, a plant prank and they'll say, oh, there's dihydrogen oxide in the water supply and you're going to die from it. Well, you do if you inhale because um, <laughs> you drown. But that's just water. OK, um, this is ammonia. And ammonia is one of the weird wackos because it should actually be written this way. So it should be trihydrogen nitride. Um, but in this case, the negative is written first and the positive is written second. The reason why is, is that's what somebody named it ages and ages ago. Ammonia is one of the compounds that they've been studying for hundreds of years. So basically nobody wanted to rename it. Okay, this is acetic acid. If you notice that this is acetate ion. If you put a hydrogen on it, then it's acetic acid. So that's a, a common name. Now, this is methane. This is the first of the organic nomenclature. If you have to go on to take organic, you will be terrorized. I mean, enjoy a lot of naming of organic compounds. Therefore, the principles class is an inorganic class. So we're going to stick with um, those, not adding extra ones for you. Okay, so now we've made it through the list of rules. Let's apply them. So the question is, is uh, write the names of the following compounds. Now, because you've already taken the time and you've memorized some of the oxidation, um, the polyatomics, but the oxidation number and the names, you'll get this. So you will recognize that this is the oxalate ion and it has a two minus charge. Because of that, then that means that Fe is iron. And because oxalate is 2 minus, iron has to be 2 plus. So this is iron 2 oxalate. Or, and again, you can name it one way, not both. This is ferrous because 2 plus is us and two, 3 plus is ic oxalate. And notice if you use the Roman numerals, you don't use the us. Don't use both. Okay, carbon and sulfur are both nonmetals, so that means we get prefixes. So this is carbon. There are two sulfurs, so this disulfide. And remember, it's IDE because it's the elemental form. ITE and ATE have oxygens. All right, so this one. Whoa, you recognize that that's acetate, so that's sodium acetate. Now, notice that since there's only one polyatomic, it's not in parentheses. Phosphorus and fluoride are both nonmetals, so this is phosphorus. And yes, there are a couple ways to spell phosphorus, so you can pick any one that makes you happy. And there are five fluorides, penta. And here's one of my pet peeves. F-L-O-R-I-D-E. Okay. Uh, fluoride, there's no flower in fluoride. Okay. This is potassium. K is potassium. And we have NO2. NO3 is nitrate. So since I'm short one, this is nitrite. 
Boron and oxygen are both non-metals, and you're like, wait, boron is a uh, semi-metal or a metalloid. Yep, but it's still on the right-hand side of the zigzag line, so in the naming rules, it's a non-metal. So you have diboron trioxide. Okay, in um, G, you have calcium. Calcium is group 2, so it's not variable. Hydroxide. Because it's not variable, it doesn't get a Roman numeral. Uh, nickel, carbonate, you know, is CO3 2 minus. So that means nickel has to be 2 plus. So it's nickel 2 carbonate. And there's no us or ick for nickel. There technically is, but I'm not holding you responsible for it. I just like to say nickel ick. Um, but th that would be Nicholas, actually. Um, can't even remember. It's just fun to say. All right, now we're going to go in reverse. We're going to write the chemical formulas for the following compounds. So bromite means that it has less oxygens. So it's going to be, be BRO. Now, I remember that per 8 is 4, which means 8 is 3, and I would be 2, and has a charge of 1 minus. How you remember that is strictly up to you. Aluminum is 3 plus. Oxide is 2 minus. That means it's Al2O3 when it combines. Sulfur hexabromide. Uh-oh, got a prefix. So it's sulfur bromide, and hexa is 6. Ammonium ion. Well, I know that one from my polyatomic list. Diarsenic. up. Oh, We've got prefixes. Arsenic is AS2 sulfide 3. Perchloric acid. Hmm. Okay, ick, remember, was 8. And per means plus 1 oxygen. So ClO4 hydrogen. ClO4. That's perchloric acid. Copper 2 bromide. Bromide, remember, is 1 minus. Copper has to be 2 plus, so this is CuBr2. Trisilicon, 3. Tetranitride. Okay, this one's kind of a simple one. This one's how many atoms total are there in one formula unit of the following. And basically the exercise here is for you to remember how to distribute. So remember, there are three calciums. But when you have the two, you distribute to both. So that means that you have two phosphoruses. Whoops. Um, you have three calciums. Let me get this right. Two phosphoruses. Okay, so nobody can read that. Let's start over. Three calciums, two phosphoruses, and eight oxygens. So that means that you have a total of 13 atoms here. Now, in this particular case, you're going to only distribute here. So you have two nitrogens, eight hydrogens, two chromiums, and seven oxygens. <laughs> that doesn't work out well. So 10, so here you have 19 atoms. And the reason I'm pointing this out is later we're going to need to be able to do this when we do molecular weights. But right now, I need you to remember. Remember I told you it was an applied math? So a subscript outside of parentheses is just like having a subscript inside. So that means it's 2x plus 2y. It's all math related. I know. Yeah, some of y'all just groaned. All right, now this type of problem I want you to look at, and we're going to walk through it, but I will not give you one of these on the test, and I'll tell you why. These are good when you're walking through stuff and you're, you're looking at stuff, but when you're in a stressed out situation, these will freak you out because you're like, no, no, it's got to be right, it's got to be right. No, it's not, so we'll go accordingly. So the question here is, in the following, which pair is correct? And correct the ones to make them true. So if you look at this compound, is this potassium nitrate? No, because potassium is not P, it's K. So all I have to do is change the P to a K, and now it's right. 
So for B, this is um, the nitrite. So is this nitrous acid? Actually, yeah, this one's actually correct as it stands. Magnesium nitrate, and you're looking at going, yeah, that was right. No, it's not because magnesium is 2 plus and nitrite is 1 minus, so we have to put a 2 there. Okay? Um, N2O4, nitrogen oxide, nope, it's dinitrogen tetroxide. I don't want to rewrite the whole thing. And in a test, if you, if you forget and you're hand doing it, then you can write it on there. Um, ammonium. Nope. The ammonium is an ion. That's NH4. Plus, this is ammonia. Okay. Iron 2 oxide. Well, there's a 2 there, so yeah. No. This is iron 3 plus because oxygen is 2 minus. Okay, um, and I'll be honest, I hate it when uh, you put it on top, so I'm going to do it below. So this is 3 plus and this is 2 minus. So this compound is iron, iron 3 oxide or ferric oxide. Iron 2 oxide would be FeO or ferrous oxide. Okay. Now, in some of the problems in your text, looking at them, just remember to count your oxidation numbers. Okay. Now, there's a, another group of compounds that we have to name as well. These are the hydrates and the hydrates are compounds that have water associated with them and the reason why is it fits in and makes them stable have water molecules associated with them and they're associated with the salts and they have to be included in the formula so the way you name them is you name them as a binary compound but you use mono di tri whatever to designate the number of waters and you call it um, and the water term is hydrate okay so for example if we look at this compound here this is barium chloride. And you're like, okay, I got that. We did that one, chloride. But this dot and then two waters. Two is dihydrate. So you name them as a regular binary and then just throw the number of waters behind it. So this is magnesium sulfate. And this is actually common in your cat, kid, uh, cat bathroom medicine cabinet at home, probably, because this is Epsom salts. Um, you use it for soaking. And we have seven waters of hydration. So that would be heptahydrate. This is copper. Oh, wait, copper is a transition metal. So with transition metals, you either get old nomenclature or numbers. I know sulfate is 2 minus, so that's copper 2. Or uh, cupric, doesn't matter. Um, sulfate. And then it has 5 water, so that's pentahydrate. associated with it okay so they're they're simply named um by adding the number of waters associated with them okay so this is all the inorganic nomenclature there's some organic nomenclature in your chapter i'm not touching that one with a 10-foot pole okay so this is the only organic nomenclature we're going to have and then 
we are done with this chapter. Now, in the summer, we will add a section or two of the next chapter onto the first test. So make sure you look at the study sheet and the video will be posted right behind this. So don't, don't just stop at chapter two. Do the parts of chapter three that you need as well. All right.